Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to episode 20 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, I want to revisit and discuss the parallel port and some of the tools available that you can use to find information about it. I also want to discuss some of the pitfalls that have been encountered by some users when they purchase and try to use a parallel port card. Keep in mind that I'm neither a teacher, machinist, nor an engineer. I'm a home hobbyist sharing my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. I hope that over time other hobbyists can leverage the videos in their attempt to make their own CNC machines. Additionally, I hope to flatten the learning curve to help people avoid some of the more confusing parts along the way. With that out of the way, let's get started. After I completed episode 10, titled Linux CNC and the Parallel Port, I thought all was well. But soon after, I was asked questions about how to find the parallel port information when it didn't show up using the commands I described in the tutorial. If you recall, the first was a pair of list commands looking for the enumerated parallel ports in the dev folder. The command was ls slash dev slash pairport star to list the enumerated parallel port or ls slash dev slash lp star to list the enumerated lp ports. lp port stands for line printer. The second command was to view the port addresses that the system had assigned to it by executing the command sudo cat slash proc slash io ports pipe grep pair port. This command, if you remember, displays the contents of the io ports file located in the proc folder and displays any lines that matches the text pair port. It turns out that I must have been very lucky in the cards that I've purchased. I say this because after helping a few people diagnose their issues they were having, I was surprised to discover that not all parallel port cards are the same. For example, one user purchased an inexpensive PCIe parallel port card. While I forget the exact brand of the card, I do remember it having a WCH CH382L chipset. When this card was installed, Linux detected it as a serial device. I will get into the methodology of this a little later. After some research, the chipset on this card seemed to take a serial stream of data that gets shifted to the parallel port on the card. Now, in normal computer usage, this might be okay because the manufacturer of these cards provide a driver that will handle the details. However, Linux CNC is a different animal. Linux CNC runs in a real-time environment, and the real-time drivers expect the parallel port to be a real, bona fide parallel port. If you've watched my episode on the parallel port and you ran into this issue, please accept my sincerest apologies. So all this begs the question, what parallel port card should be purchased for use with Linux CNC? It seems to me to be a tough question to answer. I have never been able to find a definitive list of cards that will work with Linux CNC. When you look for a card to use with Linux CNC, read the specifications closely and note whether they claim to work with Linux. If the proposed card does not list Linux as one of its supported operating systems, then pass it by. If it has a WCH382 chipset, leave it alone. This chipset is known not to work. Chipsets that seem to work well with Linux CNC are made by SIG Incorporated, Oxford Semiconductor, and Moss Chip Semiconductor, and there are probably other ones that will work too. This brings me to an aside. As a small side project, I would like to get a list of cards and their chipsets that are known to work or not work with Linux CNC. As more information about what cards that do and do not work with Linux CNC are discovered, I will post them on the web for anyone that might find this list helpful. If you think you'd like to help in this project, there will be more information at the end of the tutorial. To view the current list of cards and their status, please visit my website, www.myheap.com, and from the menu at the top, mouse over CNC stuff, and click on the Linux CNC EMC2 link on the submenu. 
This page contains a list of written and video tutorials pertaining to Linux CNC and, at the bottom, a list of other related Linux CNC information. From this list, select the link titled Parallel Port Cards that are known to work or not work with Linux CNC. If you've purchased one of the cards listed on the website, chances you'll not need this additional information. On the other hand, if your card is not listed on the site, then you may be interested in finding more information about the card. First, for those of you who are gluttons for punishment, let me give you the five mile flyover on how the computer recognizes and configures the card. For the rest of you, this will only take a couple of minutes. When you turn your computer on, the BIOS does a power on self test checking the hardware to make sure that it's in working order. Then, along with its other housekeeping duties, it will enumerate the PCI buses and devices. It is responsible for assigning the devices to either memory mapped or I.O. address space. After the BIOS has completed all of its housekeeping duties, it will go to the master boot record of your computer's boot device and will start the bootloader. In our case, that is Grub. Grub will start the Linux kernel and the temporary boot file system to allow the kernel to mount the permanent disk file system. When this is complete, the root file system will be changed from the temporary file system to the permanent file system that you're familiar with on your computer. The kernel uses APCI to communicate to find the hardware attached to the computer and when it finds a piece of hardware it will populate the sys file system with the information about the hardware. When this gets populated the UDEV program creates a device file in the dev folder and loads the appropriate kernel module or driver to use that hardware. The files or devices created by UDEV are what we use to communicate with the device using the computer. If I lost you, don't worry about it. There's not many who care or need to know how this works, but in a fully supported piece of hardware, the computer should create a file in the dev folder and load a driver called a kernel module to allow it to be used. After the computer is booted up, we need to know if the card that we installed will work and what addresses are used to work with it. The simplest method to check if the card was detected and a driver loaded for it is to check the dev folder for its device file handle. In episode 10 of the series, I showed you the command ls. The ls command lists files in a folder. The full command we used was ls slash dev slash paraport star. The result of the command, if all went according to plan, should have been one or more enumerated parallel ports. What you would see on the screen is something like slash dev slash paraport zero be returned to you. On the other hand, if you get a message about cannot access or no such file or directory, then something is amiss. It means that the card was not populated by UDEV because it didn't recognize it or had no driver that matched the card. I should point out that if your computer has an onboard parallel port, you'll get at least one enumerated port when you do the listing. But if your listing doesn't show additional enumerated ports, then you're still in the same boat. Lastly, if all went well, the PROC file system will let us know what resources were assigned to the parallel port on the card. Recall from episode 10 that we issued the command cat slash proc slash IO ports pipe grep pairport. As a recap, this command lists the contents of the IO ports file located in the PROC directory and passes that contents to a program called grep. Grep, in turn, looks for the phrase pairport and will output to the screen every line in the file that contains the text pairport. This line of text will show us the addresses the BIOS has assigned to that particular parallel port. If these are the cases, then we have the information we need to configure the parallel port for use with Linux CNC. If, on the other hand, this inf information isn't available, well, then what? If the card we added to the system is not showing up as an enumerated port, there are some commands that we can try 
to use to find out what the computer did discover about the cart. Commands that we might find useful are LSPCI, which will list and display information about devices that are connected to the PCI and PCIe buses, and dMessage, which will let us view the kernel ring buffer messages that the kernel made during the startup process. There are other programs that will give hardware information as well, such as LSHW. This does not mean that we can get the card to work, but at the very least we'll get an idea of what the computer thinks things are. Let's go to an installation of Linux CNC and run some additional commands and see what we find. Okay, so what I have installed is Debian Stretch, or version 9. Uh, this is available from Linux CNC website. It's uh, running the uh, um, RT preempt kernel. Uh, this is not the RTAI kernel like you've been getting wheezy. Uh, and, and again, um, I just want to apologize in advance. I am experimenting with, I, I'm uh, actually connected to this machine uh, through a, uh, through an RDP uh, connection uh, so that I can um, show this. So anyway, <clears throat> this machine has an onboard parallel port and serial port. I just want to note that. And in addition to that, I have installed two PCI parallel port cards, Okay, one of which contains a serial port. So in the previous, uh, I think it was episode 10, you know, I showed you how to uh, find out the enumerations of the uh, of the of the parallel ports, and what I said was we've done an ls, which means list, and we want to list device. That's the folder, and inside the folder we want to list pair port star, right? And here we see, in this case, I'm seeing parallel port zero, which I happen to know is the uh, onboard parallel port. Uh, parallel port 1 and parallel port 2. So I'm seeing that this machine has three parallel ports, right? And um, so I, but I showed that in the original and I said then if you wanted to know the resources that they were using, we would cat, which remember I said was concatenate, and we went in the proc file system and we're looking for a file called IO ports, right? So we want to display the contents of that file but we want to send it to a program called grep and we want grep to identify those lines that start with pair port okay so when we hit enter we see that uh, uh, we, we see pair port 0, pair port 2, and pair port 1 and you notice this is all zeros okay so in some cases you have to uh, have to have um, root or administrative access to actually see the address. So we're going to just rerun this program here and we're going to tack on sudo in front of it and it's going to ask for the password. So now we see it and we see the uh, addresses that are associated with it are with the port. So parallel port 0, its base address is 0378. Okay. Parallel port 1, its base address is DC E0. Parallel port 2 is DCC8. And uh, you may be asking yourself, how do I know which one's the base address? Well, a parallel port only has three addresses associated with it, right? So we have uh, 7, 8, 7, 9, 7, A. Because remember, this is in hexadecimal or base 16. Same here, C8, C9, C A. Or in this case, E0, E1, and E2. So that's how we know that this is the base address. Okay, but the what we're driving at here is like, well, what if none of this shows up? Well, if that's the case, probably what's happened is that either uh, Linux has misidentified your card or uh, Linux um, has identified it as something else or just doesn't have a clue what it is. Now, that doesn't mean that we can fix it. It just means that that card that you have is, is probably not going to work with Linux, okay? So the uh, commands that I do want to talk about that might be able to help, uh, there's a few of them. Uh, the first one is called LSPCI, right? So a computer has a bus called a PCI bus or PCIe, which stands for Express Bus, that has um, all the all the cards uh, that you could put in your computer attached to it, plus some internal devices. So this stands for List LS, right? List PCI. And if we hit enter here, uh, this is kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can stretch this out just a little bit and make it a little bit more readable. Okay, so here we see the buses and we say, okay, um, we have a host bridge adapter, it's Intel, right? We have a PCI bridge. 
there's a VGA compatible controller that's our our video card and yada 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 and all the way down here at the bottom we're seeing the cards that we plugged in right or the cards that I plugged in so um, there's a communication controller by MOSFET semiconductor okay and there's a parallel port controller from Time Media um, so I I know that those two cards that the computer sees those two cards okay and I explained earlier in the slides of how it goes about doing this so what can we find out uh, just listing like this isn't going to you know doesn't really provide much of an information but there are switches that LSPCI uses that would help us okay and one of those is the K switch so if we said LSPCI minus K this will list uh, the same list up here but it will tell us what kernel drivers or what drivers the computer is trying to use to access those okay so when I hit enter and we see down here at the bottom of our list there's a communication controller for MOS chip that uh, the kernel driver in use is paraport underscore serial so let me uh, explain that the, the the this particular card has a parallel port and a serial port right so it loads paraport serial which is uh, capable of driving both the parallel port and the serial port and then here we see the parallel port uh, parallel controller from time media technology it just loads the parallel port PC so we can see that these um, devices uh, are loading properly and that's why we're able to see the um, the resources used for them now if you have a, a card that, that lists and there's nothing here then uh, or maybe it's just uh, or has something there but you're not familiar with it it could it's probably because Linux is seeing the card as something else now what I've discovered and I've mentioned this already is that um, all parallel port cards are not created equal some of them are actually serial cards and you'll see a serial driver of sorts or a TTY driver and you'll see it identified as a serial driver somewhere up here in, in one of these lines here that that uh, um, that displays the the card name and stuff well those those just those are not going to work so uh, I'm, I'm I'm terribly sorry about that but we're just gonna have to find another one all right so let's um let's look at some of the other ones so we can get uh, uh, levels of uh, information in detail or ver in, in verbosity right so we can minus, minus V right we get more information here you notice that uh, like we'll take the parallel uh, controller here this says uh, well this is parallel ports at uh, IO ports at uh, DCE0 and there's something here at DCE8 it's running on IRQ18 so we're, we get to see the parallel port driver in use so it shows more information and we can keep adding V's right so we can LS PCI minus VV gives more information and then the minus VVV gives lots of information you know depending on what's available in the card now you may have to use sudo uh, with some of this because you might see where um, like here you see access is denied right for this Ethernet controller so if we put sudo sudo lspci minus vvv and take a look we'll notice here we get lots and lots and lots and lots of information probably more than you care to mess with so there's um there's a list of cards that are known to work or not work with uh, uh linux cnc on my website on my website and i've put a link here in the description down at the bottom to show them to you uh, but um, there's something, uh, I, you know, if you're willing to participate, if you have a card that is not listed on that page and you know it works or it doesn't work, um, I, I'd like for you to email me to Xavier, X-A-V-I-E-R at gtech, G-T-E-C dot com and give me the information about that card so we can add it and maybe help other people. So if we did this LSPCI, right, and we're going to use another one called um, minus n there's minus n right and minus n n and what this does is it displays the vendor and device IDs right so minus n just displays the numbers for those cards so remember the very last one if we look up here you know here's the bus three number two zero right three two zero so this is a fourteen oh nine seven two six eight well that that doesn't really 
tell us much. So if we run this again with two ends, we get the same information except that it also looks up the the um, the vendor, right? So here we see that we have a Time Media Technology Company, right? Limited. That's the vendor. That's the 1409, right? And this is a, a, a Sun 1888 or dual uh, IEEE 1284 parallel port, and that's the 7268 number that we're seeing. Okay, so these are called device and vendor IDs. So the very first number is the vendor ID, that's who manufactures the card. The second number is the device ID that explains what exactly the card is. So if we look over here, uh, right above it, at this communication controller, we see that the vendor ID is 9710, which is MOSCHIP Semiconductor Technology Limited, right? And the device ID 9835 is a uh, PCI 9835 multi IO controller. So we know that uh, you know when when you know your card works and, you, and it has resources, you know it works. If you can email that information to me, then I'll add it to the list if it's not already there. Or if your card doesn't work, say it shows up as a serial or whatever, then um, you know we can add it there and say, hey, this this card doesn't work. So that way, other people going out shopping for parallel port cards don't get bit. All right, so there's some um, other commands that we can use to find information out. One is called D message, D M E S G. So the uh, Linux uh, has a um, what's called a kernel, and the kernel um, is like the heart of the computer. And the kernel, as it's the machine starts up, and and, and as the machine operates, it uh, records things right in, in what's called a ring buffer. In other words, a circular buffer. So it it, it records and then after it reaches so so big it it uh, overwrites stuff but in this buffer D message if we just hit it it, it will scroll all kinds of uh, crazy stuff up there so that's that's not very useful but we can do um, we can pipe the output right um, like we have before to grep and we can look for certain things so maybe I'm looking for pair port right and here I see, okay, well, uh, there's a parallel port zero, it's at 378, right? It's on IRQ7, parallel port one is at uh, DCE0, right, on IRQ18, parallel port two is at DCC8. So, you know, we can get information um, about the parallel port by using D message, okay? And then uh, and finally, uh, another thing that I will mention is, um, uh, LSHW, right? It stands for List Hardware. And again, it's one of those commands that if you type that in and hit enter, well, we got a little notice there saying, hey, you should run this as uh, root, All right? So we'll do that, sudo LSHW, okay? And it builds up this list of stuff. Now, this is kind of hard to read, right? Um, but we can go through here and and uh, this is in a sort of a tree f form. It's it's hard to hard to read. So let's uh, let's add a command line switch to this. We can tell it to display in different, um, you know, like in JSON or HTML or whatever. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say uh, sudo uh, lshw list the hardware and put it in HTML format. Now if I hit enter here, I will. Uh, it, it puts it out in HTML, but see, it just throws it up on the screen, and that still does us no good. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to rerun that program, and we're going to redirect that. That's what that little arrow is, and we're going to say, hey, put this in a file called hardware.html. Okay, and uh, once it's done, if I do a file listing with ls, I see that file there that says hardware.html. Okay, and so now I want to say, hey, open up Firefox. And with Firefox, open up hardware.html. Okay, so Firefox should open up, and then now this is a much easier to read interpretation of what we had before. So what this uh, what this tells us is it gives us information about the computer. Now, unfortunately, 
if you have an onboard parallel port, it won't show up in here. But if if you have a PCI card that you've uh, put in or PCIe card, it will show up. So as we scroll down here, we start out and says, okay, well this is a this is a mini tower computer. It's a it's a Dell Optiplex 330, right? There's the serial number. It's 32 bit and uh, tells me what motherboard it has, what firm, bio, uh, BIOS firmware we're running, uh, CPU information, um, memory. So this is, this is pretty handy, right? Uh, the second CPU. And then now we get into the PCI stuff, right? There's, there's a host bridge. Um, there's the PCI bridge. Uh, there's the VGA uh, controller, the video controller. And we can keep going down. And multimedia... PCI bridge, network, card, uh, USB controller, and sooner or later we're going to get down here to where the stuff that we have plugged in, right? And we're going to see USB controller, PCI bridge, okay here's the first one, communications controller, PCI 9835 multi IO controller, MOS chip semiconductor, remember we read this, so this is running pair port serial, okay? The IRQ, the IRQ uh, 17, and then remember we have the uh, IO port addresses. Here's the, the next one, parallel port controller, it's a Sun 1888 dual parallel port card. We see this running pair port PC, right? IRQ 18, and then the IO port. So you can get information about the controller that way too. Okay, so look, that was a lot of information, and that was really fast because you know I don't want this stuff to uh, to go on and on and on and on. So go back and, and rewatch this uh, part of the video and these commands that I'm running, and uh, it will help you identify the, uh, the the information about your hardware. Now, if these cards don't show up, or you know if there's no driver associated with the cards that you put in or it identifies it as a serial controller or something other than just a parallel port, that's probably not going to be usable with Linux CNC, and you're going to have to find a different one. But uh, regardless, if you, uh, if you have a card that works or if you have a card that does not work, uh, I would so greatly appreciate it, and I imagine other people would too, if you can give me the vendor ID, the device ID, and the vendor name and, and device name, and then we can add it to the list. And uh, I'll, I'll reiterate how to do that uh, again uh, real quick, and then uh, maybe in the slide too. So the best way to get the vendor IDs and the um, and the device IDs, remember, is to LSPCI, list the PCI devices, right? And um, do dash, I'm sorry, dash NN, right? And we'll find our parallel port controller is 14097268. So remember the first number is the device, I mean is the vendor ID, and the second number is uh, the device ID. And here we have um, the communication control here. Remember I put two cards in here. The vendor ID is 9710. The device ID is 9835. Now, the only other thing uh, that I want to bring up here is let me launch Firefox. You can actually look these numbers up. So, if we go to, I think it's deviceid.com, or it might be vendorid.com. Where are we going to go? Ah, here. Vendor ID lookup. I'm sorry about this, guys. Okay, so it's um, uh, PCILookup.com. So if you go to PCILookup.com, the vendor ID and device ID, remember, let's, t let's take this one here. The vendor ID is 1409, right? So we'll come over here and put that in. Vendor ID is 1409. And the device ID was 7268 and if we submit that we'll, it will tell us that hey okay vendor ID that's Time Media Technology um, Company Limited and then the description is this is a Sun uh, 1888 dual IEEE 1284 parallel port so that's the information that I'm looking for 
and uh, that's what we'll put in there. And that information can be found if you go to my address to myheap.com. Okay. And if you go to CNC stuff, Linux CNC uh, EMC2, and scroll all the way to the bottom, I have a uh, parallel port cards that are known to work and not work with Linux CNC. I see I need to make a fix to my page. So here you see it vendor ID, device ID. Uh, the chipset, if you can find the chipset, that's the manufacturer and the model and anything, any notes that you want to pass along. So uh, on this page, anything in green, um, these are known to work. Uh, the chipset's probably what you really want to look at. And uh, what's in red is known not to work, right? Um, for example, this is a, let's take this one here, this uh, WCH uh, card has an unknown manufacturer model because these numbers don't actually look up in the PCI database. So it's, it's probably, a, it's it's a knockoff. It's a Chinese knockoff that is uh, doesn't work. And this is actually, um, shows as a serial controller, right? So anyway, that's enough for this part. Let's uh, let's go back to the slides and, um, and let's finish this up. So uh, thanks for being so patient. I know this was a little long and I know it w uh, went very quick, uh, but... Uh, 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 I would rewatch it again and, and hopefully that helps. And if you have questions, always, always, please feel free to uh, post them down in the uh, description down below. So let's get back to the slides. At this point, I've covered some more ways to try to find out what your computer thinks the parallel port card you installed is. In most cases where the card does not work, it appears that the computer sees the card as a serial card. While technically not a parallel port card, these are sold as such and the driver for them looks like it shifts the serial data to parallel and sends it out. This will not work for Linux CNC, even if a driver existed, well, for a couple of reasons. Linux CNC has to be able to manipulate the data on a bit level of the port and even if the driver was handling it, you'd have a bottleneck between Linux CNC and the actual output of the card because of the serial and parallel bit shifting. I would ask that you think about helping in a little project that I'm working on. I would like to generate a list of cards that work with and do not work with Linux CNC. This list of cards currently can be found on my website. I've included a link in the description below. If you be kind enough to email me with information about your card, I would like to add it to the list. To gather that information, open a command prompt on your Linux CNC machine and enter the following command lspci nn. Look at the list of PCI devices on your computer and find the line that contains your card. Make note of the vendor and the device names along with the vendor ID and the device ID. These IDs will be two sets of four hexadecimal digits separated by a colon. While this may not help those who have obtained cards that do not work with Linux CNC, hopefully I've given you a little bit more knowledge on how to find out what the computer thinks the card is. And maybe the list of cards that we put together that work and don't work will help others. In the next video, I'd like to get back on the path I was originally on. I'd like to show you a real StepConf setup on my own actual CNC router. From there, I want to talk about HAL, the hardware abstraction layer, and introduce some key concepts on how things are wired together virtually within Linux CNC. Additionally, I would like to discuss best wiring practice for hooking up things in the outside world. I know that some of these discussions may seem a little outside the norm, but please remember, my goal is to try to give information that can apply to any CNC controlled machine. As always, thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is an exciting and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends who are thinking about getting into it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.